Hey everyone and welcome to lesson number nine. If you recall, we were working on the, let me get back here, the welcome setup. And this probably says this is my site. I was doing some tests just to make sure I remember the right way to do it. Now we've updated that. You can see it works just fine. I have changed the styling a little bit and I added a little bit of information here to show users exactly how this is going to work and how the link looks. Um, and we've added an add post section. Now we just need to work on this choose post to edit or delete. We will get the edit done for sure. I don't know if we'll get the delete done. Um, the one part about this is that even though it is pulling information in from the database and we can change the information in the database, it's not referenced within the actual site. So none of this stuff is actually changing on the site just yet. So let's go ahead and do that. And, uh, that. Um, I will go ahead and say I did change this to site setup. It said something else before. Also, um, I got rid of the table. If you recall, this was still in table format when you last looked at it. It now has labels instead. I made the site description a text area. I made the Google Analytics section a text area. Um, the submit, bu submit button, I gave it a class of submit and a value of update info if you want to change that stuff. Um, and really, that's about it. You can actually get rid of these down here, too. They don't help you with anything. So, I think... That pretty much sums it up. Let's go ahead and start pulling this information in. So go to the index.php as in the main index of the site. You'll want to navigate to the site root. Let me close all this stuff so it's easy to see. So within the site root of ssblog, that index.php, the page where the user will be seeing or, or a visitor will be seeing when they come to look at your page. And now within this page, first thing we need to do is make a new record set. So add, record set, and we can just name it uh, admin. And you can select all, that's fine. We don't need to change any of the parameters. Click OK. And now that's been added. And now we just need to go in here and change this stuff. So we can select that and do a dynamic text. And we want the meta of the admin. Click OK. And I don't know why it always pastes it down there. I'm just going to cut that and paste it where it needs to go. And then I'm going to be using copy paste from here on out because it just seems to work a little smoother. And this was called analytics and our custom site. Title. Oop, looks like we need to get rid of this too. Okay, and we need to change this site title. This is the type title that people would be able to see. And just to show you that that is working, we can come here, we can go to localhost, slash ssblog, and now if we inspect element, and we come to the head where we have the site title, that's something we changed, you can see that now it says my site and before it had like a uh, something else there but if we come into the vlog panel here and we can go my cool site save oh I don't want to save that update info then reload the page now within the head my cool site so it's working it's updating that information dynamically um, now we need to change the logo, and the weird thing about the logo is it's not on this page, it's actually referenced within the style.css. So that's when this style.php file comes in. So I'm going to uncomment that, and I really, you should probably really use something like Ajax to handle stuff like this, or JavaScript, um, but I thought I'd go ahead and use PHP, it's a little bit easier since we've been working with PHP this whole time. and. Uh, Honest to goodness, the style sheet is absolutely identical to this style sheet, except it's got a .php extension. So after we save this, you'll see it gets updated up here. And you can tell it's the exact same thing, except it doesn't have the nice coloring. It doesn't do the, it doesn't recognize the syntax. It doesn't do syntax coloring. Um, the, but what we have to do here is we have to tell um, the index page that this is a CSS file because it thinks it's a PHP file. So we do that by content type. I have to put that in quotations. Content type. Text slash CSS. End statement. 
And now when we reload the page, everything appears normal. Now we need to find the logo. Oh, actually what we need to do is make another record set. And for this we want, uh, let's just name it logo, admin, and all we want is just the logo. Okay. Now we need to find the logo tag. And I just use Command F to pull up a search and search for it. And now let's uh, replace the old logo here with some dynamic text. And this is actually row logo logo. Close this. Save it. And everything's working just fine. Now the cool thing here is if you recall in the very beginning I told you I had two logos images that I saved. So I have I always do that. Um, so I have images logo and logo new. So update info and now when we look at the site it's a new logo and it's that easy to change the logo and and that makes it really easy for the user to put their own images in and you can apply this technique to basically colorings or backgrounds or uh, classes you could you know you could change classes of buttons I mean it goes on and on and on it gives you a lot of power and a lot of flexibility um, with just a few simple commands like that so I'm gonna change this back to logo new update info and there we go we're back where we were okay that looks pretty good now we just need to set up this um, let's try to get the edit section done come back to the index.php under the login folder and down here at the bottom, we'll need to start a new record set. We do a lot of record sets, I know, but it's important. Um, for this, we want blog. We want to select from the blog, and we'll just select all. I think that's fine. Um, but let's do order by date descending. Okay. Scroll down to the bottom. Get rid of this title. We can actually paste in. This is going to be row blog, and this is going to be the title. And now this part is a little tricky. I think there's a way to do this within Dreamweaver, but I just go ahead and type it out because I think it's just as easy. Um, we want to go for the delete button. We obviously want to go to a delete.php question mark ID equals, and then we want to do like a PHP um, echo row underscore blog ID just like that and then we can copy all of this let's actually just copy this section we'll see paste it in here control V and change this to edit because this one is for editing Save that. Let's see if it's pulling in correctly. Uh, actually, before we do that, go ahead and select this whole section all the way down through the break tags. Those are just for styling only. Um, and we want to repeat the whole region. And we want to repeat the blog record set as many times as we can. Save that. I load this page. And now here are all of our my first title, my second post, and my last post. So they seem to be working correctly. Now, and they will be passing in, if you can see here, we'll go to the edit.php page, it'll be passing in an ID equal to whatever the ID is that we clicked. Um, and so now we need to go to the edit.php, and just real quickly before I run out of time, we need to create a record set. Um, it needs to be the blogs, blog, and the blog table, and we can actually select all, but this time we need to do a filter. Filter ID is equal to URL parameter ID. And so whatever ID number is passed in the URL, it's going to know that it's going to need that particular blog selection. Sort, we don't need to sort. Click OK. It does all the hard work for us. And now down here under edit your post, we need to do an update wizard, um, connection DB Kong, table to update blog, um, select record from blog, uh, unique column uh, is ID and it is unique, 
we can, after updating, we want to go to the success.php, which we used earlier, but we can reuse it. That's just fine. We want to remove the ID section, and we want to leave everything else. And if we want, we can even go ahead. I didn't show you this earlier, but like article, we, you know, I keep changing it to a text area. You can actually do that right here if you wanted to. Video, text area. Just something if you wanted to do that. And um, the rest of the stuff, we can leave the same. Click OK. Now... There it is, it pasted it all in. I'm not gonna format it now, I'm gonna do the same thing where I get rid of all the tables and put in labels and uh, let's just see if it worked though. Save that, reload the page. Now when we come down here to edit, this is my change title. There it works, this is my change title, the video. I'll change this to really awesome video, update record. Um, now if we edit again, really awesome video, so it saved it. We can cancel, it takes us right back. Um, this is my second post, edit. Let's change this to, this is my latest post, and let's change the date um, to the 24th. And now, oh, and I think, let me try this again, let me change this one to the 20 seconds. There we go. That hadn't actually happened yet, so that's why it's, it was before this. But now, this one's dropped down, this one's right above it, and this one it reorders it by date descending. So they should be in the proper order when we get it all set up. And I'm going to wrap it up there for this one. Uh, next time I'll pick up with the delete button. Right now the delete one's not working totally. And I'm also going to show you how to make this more like this, stevens.com slash ss blog, login, index.php. Um, as you can see, they're not all on one page. I have it set up so it's doing um, simple JavaScript to pull in the information. So, anyways, I will catch you guys in lesson.